Now, we've gotten from uh, international affairs to uh, domestic affairs, and uh, there's a presidential campaign going on. I've noticed you have a handsome lapel pin there that says Hillary 2008. So my question for you is, what would be your preference? First gentleman or first man? I think the, the, the Scottish uh, friends of mine have suggested I should be called the first laddie. <laughs> which would require... <laughs> that would be the easiest to relate to the previous. I, you know, I don't know. I, look, I'm proud of her, and I think she's doing a great job. I hope she wins. I think it'll be good for the country. But it's... Um, I think... Uh, this is a very interesting election because it's starting so soon. I think there's a bad reason for that, which is that the calendar's all been jammed up and with maybe unintended consequences for all the big states that moved up so close. I, can't, I still can't tell what's going to happen. But the good news is that uh, after the 2006 election, the American people decided, including a substantial number of Republicans and almost all independents, they all decided that we had to, what we were doing wasn't working and we needed to find a new way forward and we ought to launch this great debate about what the terms of our citizenship should be, what the mission of our government should be, what the role of our country should be in the 21st century. It's almost like we passed, the rest, uh, you know, kind of pushed a restart button or something. And I think that's very healthy. We're having, you know, basically positive campaigns in both primaries with basically serious discussion of important issues, and that's got to be a good thing for America. So, yeah, I have uh, strong feelings about it, but it, most of my life is what I do now outside politics. It's almost like Hillary and I have switched positions. I do the kind of thing she did for more than 20 years from the time we first met. And I hope very much that she wins, and I'm doing what I can to help, but I hope that whatever, whatever I'm called, I'll do whatever I'm asked to do, but I hope whatever it is I'm asked to do, I'll still have time to keep doing what I'm doing now. But how do you see the electorate? I mean, do you feel that you have that same touch feel for the way Americans are, are thinking that you used to have, or do you feel a little more distant from it? And what do you see among American voters in terms of an appetite for change? Because some of the issues have been, does, does she in fact represent change or are there other people who represent, represent change more prominently? Well, that's not about substance, that's about labeling presentation. Um, I will say again, it seems to me the country has some very big challenges. We have to restore America's leadership in the world which involves finding some resolution to Iraq, yes, but it also involves telling people we're back in the diplomacy and cooperation business, whether it's on, you know, and let me say this. The one thing that really bothers me uh, for my country is that I think that when we pulled out of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty and the Kyoto Climate Change Accord and the International Criminal Court and all these other things, we stopped cooperating with the Latin American military, something President Bush has since reinstituted. I think that we, we had an image of ourselves frozen in the, in the minds of a lot of people around the world, and I don't think that America or the President uh, can now get enough credit when they're doing something that's good. Uh, this AIDS program has done way more good than harm, way more good. It's done a lot of good. We work with it in my AIDS project around the world. The President's trying to take on malaria now. I think I, he did something that I really liked, and apparently majorities of both parties in Congress disagree, but he wants to change the way we give food aid in America today. You got all the food we give to hungry people around the world has to be grown in America, and three quarters of it has to be delivered on American flagships. The Canadians and the Europeans have changed to allow more of their money to be spent just giving the money to poor farmers in the place closest to the famine, which means more money for the farmers, and the money buys a lot more food and it gets there a lot quicker. And, you know, I think that's a great thing, but I haven't heard a single foreign leader say, boy, I'm glad he did that. Because we've 
convince people that we prefer to act alone in Secretary Albright's terms. We prefer, uh, we prefer to act alone whenever we can and cooperate when we have to, and it should be the reverse. So that's the first thing. We've got to get ourselves back in business if we want to lead the world and convince China and India to join us fighting climate change or any of this other business. We have to tackle inequality at home. We can't continue to, this, the last six years we've had 40 year high in corporate profits, all time high in the stock market. Every year worker productivity has increased. But wages are flat or declining, median wages. And there's an increase in poverty among working people, increase in working people losing their health insurance. And Goldman Sachs says two thirds, Goldman Sachs now, not some liberal democratic think tank, says 64% of the increase in corporate profits is directly due to the ability to depress wages and compensation. So we are now seeing a growing inequality in our country, which is bodes ill for a country that was made great by a strong middle class. We've got to do something about health care. It's going to bankrupt the economy. And we can't just raise more taxes and cover everybody because if we don't fix the system and we don't deal with the rising tide of obesity and diabetes, no matter what we do to cover everybody, the system will collapse on itself within a decade again. We're already spending 16% of our GDP on health care. Switzerland spends 12%, but they have 17.5% of their people over 65, and we're at 11 and a half or 12 or something. Nobody else with a comparable age distribution spends more than 11. The difference in 16 and 11, $700 billion a year. So we've got to control costs, cover everybody, and start promoting wellness as well as treating sickness. If we don't do it, the country will pay an unconscionable human and economic price. So we have big things to do. So are we going to change? You bet we are. But the real question is, how are we going to do it? No candidate, there's, there is no candidate that won't represent change. So that's just a little cheap slogan. I don't think that people mind the changes that affected, that were affected in the eight years I was president. I had a 65% approval rating when I quit. But nobody thinks we can go back to the 90s either because the, the times are different. So we got to have a, 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 you know, a, a restore America policy abroad and a restore America policy at home. And they require all changes, all kinds of changes. 